much for joining me. Now in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the chart of Jonas Salk, who was a scientific pioneer who created the polio vaccine, which saved so many lives and basically uh, was a huge factor in making sure that you know polio stopped being a, a real problem on this earth. There were epidemics of polio. It was very serious. People were losing limbs and all that kind of thing. This was in the 50s. And in my research, I discovered that, yeah, people were having to, you know, I guess self-isolate in a way. They, you know, there were certain people they'd have to stay away with or they couldn't go to such and such as house or, or whatever, um, you know, because when the when that was going around, it was a really, really serious thing. So the fact that Jonas Salk came up with this miracle vaccine was quite, was a wonderful thing. And um, I wanted to compare the chart of Jonas Salk to Bill Gates to show you that firstly, vaccines aren't a bad thing, uh, but perhaps who is behind it and who is creating it that, that does need to be um, explored, right? And uh, it's perfectly fine to say no and to say, I don't want something. Uh, you know, I don't want a vaccine or, or whatever it is. I think it's perfectly fine to make that choice. And equally, you know, we must also recognize that um, vaccines are amazing as well. There are good vaccines out there and there are good people making them. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you a really good person who is, uh, well, who had made something wonderful for this world. And he had a wonderful reputation um, right up until the day he died. So how about we get into the notes here? I've written everything out so I don't go down any tangents and so that I can be really efficient. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that I will be back doing consultations, not just yet. Maybe I'm kind of thinking June, July, but I will keep you updated. So um, stay tuned to this channel. Also, thank you to everyone who subscribes. Thank you to everyone who comments. Thank you to everyone who likes and interacts on this platform. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much. So I really appreciate everybody who comes here and watches and interacts. So thank you um, for that. Right, so in this episode, how about we get stuck into my notes? In this episode, we're going to meet the genius behind the polio vaccine, and that is Jonas Salk. I'll be comparing his chart with Bill Gates. Uh, and I, I, did I mention that I'll be linking above or below to that video? You can watch that as well. I've talked about Bill Gates' chart in a bit more detail. So I'll be comparing this man's chart to the chart of, of Bill Gates, since Bill Gates volunteered himself as the vaccine poster child of our times. Uh, but you see, Jonas Salk was not a volunteer like Bill Gates. He was a true scientific genius. Until the day he died, he was considered a world hero. Why? Well, he figured out the vaccine for a truly frightening and paralyzing illness, polio. He tested the vaccine on himself, his wife and his children two years before the vaccine was considered safe for the general public. He refused a ticker tape parade and the patenting of his miraculous solution. When asked who owns this vaccine, Jonas was quoted as saying, well, the people, I would say. There is no patent. Could you patent the sun? The vaccine would have yielded Jonas $7 billion had it been patented. And for that time, for the mid fifties, that is an absolutely huge sum of money. So let's take a look at his chart. For Jonas Salk, I have the time 7.30 a.m. 28 October 1914, New York, New York, United States of America. He passed away at age 81 on 23rd June 1995. During his lifetime, there was never any talk of him using a vaccine as a weapon against humanity. As I said before, he lived and died a true hero, <clears throat> the, the kind that humanity can look back on with immense pride. There is so much to say about this man's chart, but I'll just handpick a few things to discuss. So the first one to tackle is his debilitated son. Now, if you watch my Bill Gates video, you'll notice I spoke about that at quite a bit of length in the Bill Gates video. And that in conjunction with Bill Gates' Mars and Mercury, I was like, this is producing a godless man, right? Um, I wouldn't be so quick to say the same for Jonas. 
Okay, he's got a debilitated sun, but we've got other saving graces here. We've got Rahu Moon conjunction, we've got a Venus Mercury conjunction. We're going to go into those in some depth in a moment. But his sun is a little bit better than Bill Gates, right? Though in its debilitated sign, it's in its exaltation house. There is a bit more power in his sun thanks to a stronger Digbala directional strength. Uh, Jonas's son is also Lord of the house where Ketu sits. So being the Lord of Ketu, Lord of all things past, we can see that this son is not too much of a player in Jonas's chart. It's also located nearer the Ketu end of the chart um, and it's Lord of Ketu. It's not really a player this time, so I'm not concerned about it. Whereas with Bill Gates, I was concerned about it, right? I was concerned about it because it's close to Rahu, it's in the Rahu side of the chart which is the future building side of the chart. Um, and it's also Lord of very important house for Bill Gates, that's the third house where Jupiter is with Pluto. So for me, all of that was very concerning, right? Uh, whereas here, it's not a concern at all. Um, yeah, the sun is a player in Gates's future and what he does, what he creates in this lifetime. The sun was not a big player in the chart of Jonas Salk. But still, let's keep going with this concept of being godless. Um, would I say that about Jonas Salk? Not at all. Now for Jonas, two placements are showing me that he would be a person who really wants to work with the all is one, with the divine, with the one energy that binds us all. Whatever you call it, he has an appreciation of that, despite a debilitated sun. This is due to his Rahu Moon conjunction and the Venus Mercury conjunction. So let's take a look at each in turn. Rahu Moon produces an open mind. I love this combination. I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's in the chart of Robin Williams. It's in K and Rao's D9 chart. It's a terrific placement to have. <coughs> so one of the ways that I read it, and there are many ways to read it, is that it's an open mind. And I came to that with Robin Williams. I feel like his mind is a mansion with the roof blown off the top, right? Uh, you know, and this concept of open mind, I've always thought that. So when I saw it in Jonas's chart, I was like, oh, perfect. Um, in an Academy of Achievement interview, Jonas is quoted as saying, my attitude is always to keep open, to keep scanning. I think that's how things work in nature. Many people are closed-minded, rigid, and that's not my inclination. So we can see here that he's fully aware and conscious, uh, consciously using this beautiful open mind of his. You know, if he was to have an astrology reading, a, a sidereal Vedic astrology reading, he would uh, relate to this, this combination immediately. So this is really fascinating because this Rahu moon open mind is in the fifth house governed by Aquarius. Aquarius representing humanity, the humanitarian, the fifth house, including academia, creativity. The Lord of this house, the fifth house, is in the ninth house, which is higher levels of academia, right? So that's your really high-end um, research, uh, you know, PhD level stuff. Science, man-made systems of thought, right? Man-made systems of thought also includes religion. To me, religion and science, they are both equally valid man-made ways of trying to explain the unexplainable. So how did he express his creativity in the world? Through a vaccine, right? So vaccines were his creative expression, okay? Uh, and Saturn is there, so there's a material expression of this, right? So Saturn who materializes is connected with the fifth house of creativity, um, designed for the benefit of humanity. So his work is designed for the benefit of humanity. Why humanity? We've got Aquarius here, and Satta Bishak, Satta Bishak, Nakshatra contains cures. So this is all astrologically perfect, what he did um, in his life. Uh, his open mind was focused on the research for cures for all of humanity. Now all of humanity, where's that coming from? That's Pluto conjunct Saturn, I would say, in his ninth house, um, which is kind of similar to Bill Gates' third house with Jupiter conjunct Pluto. Remember, Bill Gates wanted to, well, he wants to have every single person on the planet vaccinated, right? Now, what is that reminiscent of? That's reminiscent of his Microsoft days when he wanted to put a computer on every single desk in every single home, right? Pluto gives you that kind of ambition. So 
The Rahu moon astrological signature often denotes genius, brilliance, madness, schizophrenia, right? This can be a really tough placement. And look at um, Robin Williams, right? Uh, the way that, that things, you know, um, ended there for him, I would say the Rahu moon gave him his creative genius, but I would say it tormented him as well, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's a placement that denotes genius, brilliance, madness, schizophrenia, along with intuition. Highly intuitive people um, have this Rahu moon placement. So Jonas talks a lot about intuition, specifically the rational use of intuition in scientific work. And if you remember my coronavirus video, I held up a book by him where he explains how he would imagine himself as a uh, cancer cell or something like that or, or a disease cell and then he would try and come up with a solution and all that. So this when we're looking at all of that, we're really looking at the energies of his fifth house connected to the ninth house in his chart. So what I'm going to do now is the 11 minute mark. We'll cut to a bit of video of Jonas talking so that you get to see him. You get to get a feel for who this man is. And in the interview, it's really interesting. He talks about how he believes that, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure he's saying something about how it's good to be an instrument of nature and that kind of thing. And if you watch videos of him, you'll see that this guy is really connected. He's really connected to all of humanity, of course. And that's definitely coming from the, um, the Aquarian energy in his chart. So I'm going to cut to that. Man has always fought nature. It's been yes. the, the fight to overcome the forces mm -hmm. of nature. Now you're saying that the wisest are those who, what, cooperate with yes. nature? Yes, so those who will cooperate with nature and cooperate mm -hmm. with the inevitabilities of the laws of nature. This is the evolutionary process then. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when man recognizes and understands and feels the uh, uh, the force, feels and appreciates how the process of evolution works on him and in him, he will then be able to handle himself more effectively mm. as an instrument, so to speak, of nature, in nature. Mm. Uh, what I am uh, uh, trying to convey is the idea that man is very much a part of nature and cannot regard himself as apart from nature. Because he has done so, uh, and has, his thinking has not been very good, when he comes to the conclusion or behaves as if he is not part of nature. Uh, under those circumstances, uh, he uh, will of necessity, uh, because of the nature of the process, uh, slip off in the apocalyptic fashion, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And those who understand and have a sense of what we're speaking of uh, will be those who will contribute to the survival of the species uh, in the future. How will we so now, as you were watching that, did you notice the lovely cravat around his neck? And did you notice his crystal clear voice? So that neck area, that wonderful clear voice, what's that? It's all second house, right? So this brings us very nicely to the artist combination in his second house. That's Venus and Mercury. So second house governs a lot of things, including speech, neck, art, beauty. Uh, very much values that we learn in childhood as well from our family. He was really, um, he was a, a good guy in terms of being influenced by his family. He, he was well raised by his family for sure. And his mother, I think, um, and we've got Moon, Lord of his 10th house. So mother had quite an influence in his career and in encouraging him uh, to go into medical research. So that is really interesting in his chart. I've got a note here, this is the kind of man who practices science as though it's an art form. Absolutely. He'll do it with style. You see, and look at that, it's science, it's science and art, you know, and in this, for this guy it is. You can see that, you know, and he'll, he'll do his scientific work with style, with a unique creativity that's all his own. That And that's Aquarius. So I'm really looking at second house combined with fifth house there. So let's hear a couple of quotes of what other people have had to say about him because these are really interesting. 
uh, I got this from the New York Times. So it says here, if Salk the scientist sounds austere, wrote the New York Times, Salk is, the man is a person with great warmth and tremendous enthusiasm. Absolutely, right? And, and a lot of these quotes are really connecting into that second house, the personality and the warmth um, of who he was. A Washington newspaper correspondent commented, he could sell me the Brooklyn Bridge and I never bought anything before. Award-winning geneticist Walter Nelson Reese called him a Renaissance scientist. Renaissance scientist, see? Oh well, I picked the right quotes here. <laughs> but it's true, the astrology is here, right? He's animating it, he's animating what's in his chart so beautifully. A Renaissance scientist, brilliant, sophisticated, driven, a fantastic creature. The Times said he has very little interest in the things that interest most people, such as making money. Jonas is quoted as saying money belongs in the category of mink coats and Cadillacs. Unnecessary. How cool, right? Like I would totally trust my health to this man. And if you watch my Bill Gates video, you'll see that I've said I don't trust my health to that man. Okay, so it's really interesting when you look at both of their charts. Um, yeah, and we're going back to that video, I've got the note here. Last time I was asked, how do you tell if someone is good or bad from their chart? I've looked at two men, Bill Gates and Jonas Salk. So we've come to the end here and I'll talk quickly about this. So we've looked at two men, Bill Gates and Jonas Salk. We've compared the two astrologically. And, and look, I, I have been negative about Bill and very positive about Jonas, but I'm not going to say either man is good or bad. Even though, did I say at the start that we're looking at someone who's good here with vaccines? I might have done, but see, that's in the context of vaccines. And I think what the questioner was asking me last time was, how do you tell if someone's good or bad? You can't tell if someone's good or bad as such, right? You can't just look at a chart and say, oh, this person's going to be good and this person's going to be a Hitler. This person's going to be a Mother Teresa. This person's going to be a Hitler. This person's going to save the world, this person is going to um, ruin the world. You can't because I don't think you can. I, I don't think that that's possible. Um, so I've got the note here, a chart is like a song. How you sing that song is up to you. You know how there's cover versions of songs and some people will sing that song like a gangster rapper and then someone else will sing that song like a country western singer or, or whatever. Like some people will sing it in, in a sad and devastating, horrible way and some people will sing it like it's a, a nursery rhyme or a lullaby, right? That's kind of one way of looking at charts in that because there is some degree of free will, right? Um, Yeah, I've got the note here, you know, Jonas sings sweetly and I can, be e I can easily be confident about who is good, but when it comes to bad, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to say someone's bad. I can, I, saying someone's good is um, very easy and wonderful to do, but to say that someone's bad, yeah, I, I don't want to judge. David Hawkins explains there's love and there's not love, right? I love that. I, I think that's really brilliant. I agree with that. So I think, you know, we can, we can say that someone's good. We can celebrate someone. We can, um, we can see the good things. But it's very difficult with a chart to just say that, you know, this is a bad person. It's a great question because it, it, got, it really got me thinking. And it, it also made me realize that you can't study astrology in isolation. You have to study philosophy, you have to study psychology, you have to study society, you have to study history, right? There is so much you have to study to get a feel for people when you're reading a person, you know. Um, it's, like, it's like a Saturn-Mars combination. You know, I've seen that in the chart of serial killers, but then I've seen that in the chart of, I think Stephen Hawkins has, it's a Steve, a Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking has, has one, Michael J. Fox has one, I think. Sometimes it can, that can manifest as, you know, um, 
world fame. It can manifest as, so that one conjunction can manifest as world fame. It can manifest as um, illness sometimes for some people. It can manifest as um, that person being very destructive and doing bad things. And, you know, it, it can be, it's such an art to read charts. You, you can't just say that this person is definitely going to be, uh, I don't think you can say someone's going to be good or bad. No, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. But as I've done with this instance of Bill Gates and Jonas Salk, I've looked at, okay, would I trust my health to this man? Would I trust my health to this, the other man? Okay, and that's what I've done here. And I've said that, no, I wouldn't trust my health to Bill Gates, but I would 100% trust my health to Jonas Salk, right? And that's, yes, that's looking at the charts, but it's also research about the individuals. It's watching them in interviews. It's, it's a whole lot more. So I hope that answers the question about can you tell whether someone's good or bad from a chart. I, my answer is no. You can't. And the other thing I wanted to say about that was um, it's like in psychology and I've worked with, um, I, I spent about a year writing for a psychiatric clinic in central London. I got to know the, the director of the clinic. Really well. We talked about all kinds of things. And she said that, yeah, well, you can always tell, you know, maturity levels of people. If people are very black and white, then there's, there's no maturity or sophistication about that person kind of thing. So that's why you can't say that someone's just good or bad. You know, um, that you can analyze them in a context. You can analyze them in a context of, okay, would you trust your health to this person, that person? It's that kind of thing. So I hope that answers the question. But I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. It's been such a joy um, to create this video for you. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. I hope that you are getting out, getting some sunshine. I hope lockdown is easing wherever you are. Here in Sydney, Australia, things are kind of the same. Uh, I don't go out much anyway. I spend time in the garden, but that's about all I do. I'm still working on my health, still getting well. As I say, I should be back doing readings, hopefully June, July type time, but I will definitely keep you posted. Um, but thank you so much for being such a wonderful subscriber base. Thank you for all your comments, all your interaction. I appreciate it so much. And uh, I always have ideas. Next time I want to discuss the chart of Vandana Shiva. I think she is a true hero of this time and I really want to talk about her. So even though I don't think there's a time for her, doesn't matter, we'll look at the moon chart. We just have to talk about her, she's incredible. So uh, stay tuned for that, that's coming up. Don't know when, but it will come. And I guess there'll be more meditations uh, as well as we go along. So thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.